This free opinion is brought to you by net neutrality. We need to get this right. My fellow Canadian and American friends, something has come to my attention as I have been fighting for net neutrality. North American Union is now upon us. The Prime Minister of Canada and the President of the United States have formally announced plans to create a common security perimeter for the North American continent. As called for by the CFR and the CCC and adopted into the Security and Prosperity Partnership Framework, being implemented right now, they have called for the real-time tracking via biometric and RFID technology of all travelers in North America. The full integration of our law enforcement teams, harmonizing our laws and standards, and the thinning and eventual removal of the internal physical borders, the consolidation of North America. This directly puts American, Canadian and Mexican sovereignty at risk. The definition of sovereignty is a nation's ability to self-govern, self-determination. How can we self-govern if we are obligated under law or treaty to follow the wishes of another party or interest? Placing national security into the hands of an entity that is not of Canada and cannot know what is in the best interest of Canadians sounds like a dangerous unconstitutional and reckless idea to me. At a time when the growing majority of American citizens are currently fighting against the police state and abuses of federal and state powers, we Canadians want to integrate and harmonize our national security laws and policies. With the likes of the Department of Homeland Security, we have been proud that we have not adopted naked body scanners and having our genitals groped before boarding a plane, we have prided ourselves on the many differences and the many freedoms we have been able to preserve here in Canada. It's our sovereignty and independence that allows us to choose a slightly different path and policy than our neighbors to the south, allowing for a truly Canadian experience but now we want to limit our ability to fine-tune to assess situations and to act in the best manner for Canada by obligating ourselves through security perimeter deals. All in the name of increased security and trade. It's obvious who has the ear of our government. It's the CFR in America and the CCC in Canada which companies make up these groups. Are they represented in both Canada and the United States? In Canada, are they mostly American corporations? If so, who then has the ear of our government and writes the public policy that our politicians simply rubber stamp into law? Our government is obviously not listening to the people. So who are they listening to? If you're a Canadian, ask yourself these questions. You find that when our government goes to our business community for their input, the input they are getting is from American foreign corporations, not Canadian citizens. A great example is the recent bullshit regarding Bell Canada's UBB or user-based billing. Is there any wonder why they would want to eliminate our borders to speed up the flow of goods and people? We are their trade barrier, our sovereignty is their trade barrier, our national borders are their trade barrier, and since these are things in which a corporation that operates on both sides of the border needs to eliminate, and since they hold no loyalty or sense of national belonging, they could care less of how this affects our national sovereignty. Since our government has no power to give away our national sovereignty, they need to trick us into thinking that they indeed do have this power. Or trick us into putting the question to a vote or referendum in which they can manipulate to control the outcome of. They need people to get angry and demand a vote. Demand that this is debated in the House of Commons because they themselves with no power cannot even ask the question, they need us to demand something in which they have no power to do themselves. The proper response would not be to demand a vote or a referendum, 
but rather that the government cease and desist immediately and kindly remind them that they have no power to change the face of Canada as their offices are temporary and limited by constitution a constitution that expressly prohibits North American Union and was one of the main reasons it was created to resist American expansionism now is the time for Canadians to stand up and say to our government that they don't have our consent and that we will not and expressly refuse to participate in their sedition by going along with any proposed illegal referendum or vote or scheme we refuse to put our pieces on their grand chessboard because we all know the game is rigged and we are not obligated to play the Canada EU comprehensive economic and trade agreement is being negotiated as a next generation free trade deal that goes beyond NAFTA and the WTO in shielding corporate activity from government controls the draft agreement includes extensive chapters on services and investment government procurement intellectual property and standards and regulations it will also contain a controversial NAFTA like investor state dispute process that allows corporations from Europe to directly challenge and sometimes overturn Canadian laws that interfere with profits, even for public health or environmental reasons. Too secret, not democratic enough. Like all free trade agreements, the Canada-EU talks are happening in secret with each side, making offers and requests of the other in the hopes of getting the best deal for their home companies. By their nature, trade agreements are based on corporate interests. Without corporate input how would the Canadian government know what to ask for? The flip side of this is that free trade agreements end up protecting corporate interests and giving short shrift to other public priorities such as protecting the environment, ending global poverty and generally creating economies that work for people not just for profits, live service to sustainable development. A CETAR contains a nice sounding sustainable development chapter but like NAFTA's environment and labor side agreements, this one has no teeth. Meanwhile its services, investment and procurement chapters would give European corporations new tools with which to challenge public policy and remove provincial or local development initiatives that prioritize good, green jobs and the transition to more sustainable, local economies. Municipalities left in the dark Unlike NAFTA, the Canada-EU Free Trade Agreement would interfere with local and municipal policies for the first time, and yet our mayors and municipal councillors are not part of the negotiations, policies designed to maximize public spending, by considering the social as well as economic benefits of local sourcing or local hiring would be banned municipal services including water and energy utilities would be banned while European P3 consortiums public-private partnerships would get new guarantees in municipal tendering to the possible detriment of local public services what should we do Call your municipal councillors, provincial politicians and your member of parliament. Find out if they're in favour of this deal. If so, ask them how it would affect your community. Ask how it would strengthen Canada's social, economic and environmental policies. Tell us about your conversations, link to this website. Share the materials. Learn more at www.tradejustice.ca That's www.tradejustice.ca Get your organization to sign the Civil Society Declaration on the Canada-EU Trade Agreement and become a member of the Trade Justice Network. Info at tradejustice.ca That's info at tradejustice.ca Stop the North American Union Thank you, and good evening.
And again this free opinion was brought to you by net neutrality. We need to get this right. That's www.netneutralitycanada.ca